Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles and stand real quickly for the word of the Lord. We're going to get through this really quick this morning. I feel that God wants to challenge us, but call us to a place, a special place this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the spirit of worship in this house. Amen. Don't lose it this morning. Stay in that this morning. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. I'm going to go ahead and begin to read for the sake of time. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, if that... It, that if he found any of this way, there, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near to Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was three days without sight, neither did he eat nor drink. God, we come before you. We thank you for the spirit of worship in this house. And Lord God, I ask that ears would be open to hear and hearts would be open to receive the word of the Lord this morning. And we thank you for your word and its anointing. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, Amen. You may be seated this morning. Let's talk about Paul for a moment. Or we know him as Paul. This text tells us and introduces us to him as Saul before we know him as Paul. But if you will, for the sake of time, I'm going to try to breeze through a little quick history lesson on who Saul is to bring us up to the text that we're in. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 22 that Saul was born in a place that is known as Tarsus. But he was raised in Jerusalem, brought up in the temple And being tutored by a certain man by the name of Gagamil who taught him. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 5 was a man of renown and respect in Jewish culture who taught him the law, taught him the Torah, taught him the sayings of the prophets, taught him day in and out. The Bible even says that he sat at the very feet of his teacher learning about the Jewish faith, learning about the Jewish God. That's who Saul is. I want you to know that Saul says this in Philippians 3, that if you wanted to brag in yourself, you cannot brag in yourself. He said, if anybody could brag in themselves, uh, he said, I could brag in myself. He said, I was perfect according to the law. I was circumcised on the eighth day, born to the tribe of Benjamin. I was perfect. I kept all the laws. I kept all the statutes. Uh, If anybody has room to boast, he said, I would boast. But then he goes on to say, but I count it all for lost for Christ. That's that's who Saul was. Saul was someone uh, that was, let me put it to you in this term, analogy here. Uh, Saul was someone that was raised in the church. Uh, Saul was someone that saw and, and heard the song sung. Uh, Saul and spent time with the elders. Uh, he was someone uh, that we would consider very religious, a very devout uh, believer in his faith. Uh, someone that was raised right. Uh, someone that was brought up in the things of God. Uh, Someone that was doing all the right things. They raised their hands when they should raise their hands. Uh, They told people they were praying for them when they were praying for him. He was someone uh, that read the word. He was someone
someone that prayed. He was someone that offered sacrifices. He was someone uh, that was just fine doing what they have done for thousands of years. Uh, I want to put it to you plainly this morning. He was someone that I would call uh, in the modern age very, very religious. He was very religious. He was very devout. And I want you to be aware this morning that just because we come into the house of God and just because we lift our hands and just because we pray and just because we read the Bible every now and again uh, does not mean that we cannot become religious in what we are doing. But then something happened in, in Saul's life. And what happened was a man. This man, his name was Stephen. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 6 that Stephen, among others, was chosen specifically by God through the apostles uh, to handle the business of the church. Uh, Stephen was feeding widows chicken dinners. Uh, He was someone in the marketplace uh, helping orphans and widows. He was someone, uh, the Bible says, that the Lord used uh, used him under the power of the Holy Ghost uh, to bring about uh, healings. Uh, He would lay hands on the sick and see them recover. But we find in Acts chapter 7 uh, that he gets into uh, a little bit of a scuffle when people begin to bring false witness against him. Uh, But Saul was there, and we know that he was there uh, because Acts chapter 7 tells us uh, that as they were stoning stoning Stephen, they they laid their jackets uh, at the feet uh, of this man by the name of Saul. Uh, He was there when the Bible describes uh, that the elder saw Stephen's face in Acts chapter 7. Uh, looked like uh, that of an angel. It showed uh, there was something different about him. He was there uh, in, in, as, as Stephen preached uh, the second longest documented message uh, in our Bible. Uh, he was there. He felt the authority. Uh, the Bible even tells us uh, in Acts chapter 7 that they were cut to their hearts uh, because of the preaching of Stephen. Uh, there was something powerful about it. There was something uh, that captivated him about it. I believe there was something significant about it but the people were so enraged by what Stephen was saying what he was accusing them of is pretty much that you had missed the Messiah you missed him you've been so caught up in your religious ways that you missed what you've been praying for you've missed what you've been hoping for you've missed what's been prophesied and then that angered the Jewish leaders so much that they began biting him biting him and so it, what happened is uh, is Stephen looks up into heaven uh, and he says this uh, I see Jesus uh, I see him uh, standing at the right hand of the father uh, and they were so enraged uh, and Saul was in that very room that very place uh, that they dragged him out of the city uh, threw him down uh, and I I could just imagine Saul caught up in all the excitement uh, all the things going on he began to grab the coats uh, and they began to lay him at his feet Uh, he began to help elders uh, men that he looked up to uh, as they began to stone Stephen uh, and Stephen uh, with that face of an angel uh, that anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, began to look up to heaven and he said God uh, do not lay this uh, to their charge Uh, but I want you to realize something uh, that Saul did what he was trained to do we find here in our text uh, that he was after the Christians uh, because a religious person uh, when their religion and their religiosity becomes violated uh, they, they're, they're approached by the real thing. Uh, what begins to happen, Brother Austin, I believe uh, that he did what he was trained to do. You must snuff it out. Uh, any doubt, you must get rid of it. Uh, any insecurity, you must seek it uh, until it's gone, until it's dead. You, 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 all that religion, all that teaching, uh, I can't let this stand. Uh, I, know, I, I know it messed with me. I, I wonder uh, if Saul had dreams about Stephen. Uh, I wonder if he went into the temple to pray uh, and he would begin to pray and his mind uh, would go to Stephen. I wonder if the power on Stephen's life resonated with Paul in such a manner that he's saying, I have to override this. I can't succumb to this. So we find him in this chapter. He's willing to not only travel in Jerusalem and to round up and to slaughter believers, but now he's willing to go to other places and seek out Christians to kill them. He's seeking them out. The Bible tells us that, that, that the church 
church pretty much was afraid of him because of what he was doing and who he was. But we find in our text that on his way to Damascus, I don't know, some people preach he was riding a horse. Some people say that he was walking. But but for, for, for the sake of time, I'm just going to say he rode a horse. What happened is, is God had to knock him off of his horse, put him down in the dust, and he began to call to him. And this is what he said. This is what I want to preach to you the morning. this morning. He said, why, I'm paraphrasing here, why are you kicking against the pricks? How many of us, I want to ask this morning, are kicking the call? Something happened to Saul, Brother Larry. I believe that something happened when he encountered Stephen. Something would not leave him alone. I, 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 again, I wonder if he laid down at bed at night and would begin to dream about Stephen. He would feel the wooing of the Holy Ghost not recognizing what it was. And God knocks him off of his horse uh, and he says this to, to Saul. Uh, he says, how long uh, will you resist the call on your life? Well, Paul, Paul laid it out to the Philippian church in Philippians 3. I was perfect by the law standards. God, I go to church. I pray. I, I lift my hands when the worship team sings. I, I read my Bible every once in a while. I, I volunteer. All those things are good. But Saul did those things. All those things were good, but Saul did those things. I find it interesting that you, you, you see in our culture that people, when, when, when asked, uh, are you a Christian? Yeah, I go to church. Saul went to church. The devil goes to church. You don't believe me. Uh, pe people, I want you to understand that the devil is more familiar with the presence of God than we are because he was created in it. The devil's not afraid of this church house. He's afraid of the church that's inside of you. But if he can keep you religious, you're of no threat to him. If he can keep, oh, well, I volunteer. I do all the right things. I, 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 I pray when pastor asks me to pray. I, I do this, I do that. I, I'm good, I'm good. No, no, you can think you're good and be as religious as anybody else. And Saul, God knocks him off his horse. But he was perfect according to the law, according to his religion. And he says, how long will you kick Against the pricks. You know what that word means? In the original language, it means to sting. What, what? To sting? How long will you kick against the sting? How long will you resist my conviction? How long will you resist my call? I've been wooing you, so I've been, I want my volunteers to come. I've been wooing you. I've been, I've been there. I've been in your dreams. I've been in your prayer. I don't know if those things happen, but I believe something because of the text. He says, why are you kicking against the pricks? Why are you resisting the call? Why are you resisting the sting? Amen. Just begin to lay these out. Just lay them out. Just lay them out everywhere. Don't make a mess. These are Debbie's towels. She'll be all right. Delivered by Austin this morning with a smile. He says, how long will you fight the conviction and the call of God on your life? I know this, this isn't crazy what I'm preaching to you here. But I'm, 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 I hope you brought your boots this morning. Because this is what's hard. You say, how is this supposed to be encouraging? I promise, we're getting there. Just turn to your neighbor and say, if he's getting there, that means it'll happen. The Bible says this. Me and Austin... We've, talk, we, we've talked about this to young people all the time. We know what it's like to resist the call. I know what it's like to kick the call. And the Bible tells us this in James chapter 4 and verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, the call is a good thing. The call is the truth. The truth for your life. The call, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good 
and doeth it not. To him it is sin. 1 Samuel 15. This is when, this is when the king Saul did wrong. God commanded him to do something and he did not complete it. He did not operate in obedience. This is what Samuel says to him in 1 Samuel 15. He says, do you realize that obedience is better than your sacrifice? That obedience is better than your religious activity? It's what he's saying. And he says, do you realize that disobedience is as witchcraft? Wait a second. Whoa, Jade. No, the man of God, under the anointing of the God of God, turned to the king that God put in power, and he said, your disobedience is as witchcraft. It is as darkness. And listen, I'm not saying that God doesn't extend grace. Listen, I, I, I know that God extends grace. That's why he put me here this morning. That's why God knocked Saul off of his horse. That was grace. But the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 that there is a place that if you continue in your disobedience, that grace will no longer cover your life. And he goes on to say in verse 31 of Hebrews chapter 10, he said how, how, how scary, how fearful it is for men to be handed over to the hands of an almighty God. You say, well, this doesn't sound good this morning. Here's what I want you to know is these, these people represent us. They're Christians. She's worshiping. Elijah's praying. He's reading his Bible. But I want you to see this. What you, you say, what's with the towels? There's, a, there's mantles all around them. There's a call. All around them. And here's what happens. The Holy Spirit comes. And you're in the middle of the service and the preacher's preaching the Word of God. You're in the Word of God. And and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says, Oh, I have something for you. What? Oh, that, Jesus, I can't do that. But Jesus, I, I read my Bible. Oh, but there's a call, there's a mantle, there's an anointing for your life. What, what? Oh, are you follow me? This how long the Spirit says? How long will you kick the call of God? How long? Oh, you're you're in your word. Oh God, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. What? What about? What about the anointing of your grandfather? What? He's a preacher, Garrett. He's a man of God. What? But what about the worshiper? Oh, God, I worship you. I raise my hands. I I come up front. I'm exuberant. Hey, I, I love an exuberant worshiper. I do. But the Spirit of God begins to move. Oh, I don't want that, God. I know you're calling me to it, but I don't want that. Can I just go to church? Can I, can I just have a good pastor, have a good youth pastor, have a good worship leader? Can I just go to church? Sound like anybody? Oh, she's worshiping. Oh, I have something for... Do you realize that this is disobedience? Do you... I want you to understand something. God said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Do you realize that your disobedience to God is persecuting and grieving His Spirit? I want you to understand, I'm preaching this because I love you, not because I'm mad at you. No, 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 no. I, I preach what the Lord gives me here. Oh, but this, this, this is it. This is intercession. You don't realize that you were in this worship service today. People were up here worshiping. God was moving and there was mantles all around you. Oh, but I'm a person. I pray. I pray every night before bed. I pray with my kids. I pray with my family. I pray with my wife. It may be a light. I pray for my, I pray for my generation. I pray for God to use me. But, oh, God, I don't want that. Let me just let me just place this on you, son. 
Don't you realize I have something for you? How long will you resist? How long will you resist? How long will you come against me? Because I don't know about you, but there are generals dying in this faith, going on to seek and inherit the reward which God has given them. And there are mantles all around us. But you're too tired. But you're too busy. You're too religious. There's a man a few miles from this place that founded this church that is laying in a bed this morning that told his son last week how much he would love to preach one more time and you can't pick it up. He cries and he weeps because he feels the presence of God move upon him even in his old age. And we're, we're young and we have the tenacity, we have, we have the unction, we have the zealousness uh, to do what God is calling us to. We have the energy. When he goes to give it, there's anointing, there's mantles, there's calls all around us. Are there any intercessors in this house? Are there preachers? Are there Sunday school teachers? Are there worshipers? They say, oh God, I don't want that because what will it look like? What will they think of me? Because that's what Paul grew up in. If you fell out of the religiosity, you were shunned. Jesus is proof you were killed. Oh, that's, that's not how it's supposed to look. That's not what the law says. That's not how we go to church. That's not how we do things. But God knocks him off of his horse and he says, what more do you need? How long will you resist me? How long will you kick at the call? And here we stand. Mantle's all around. A world dying and going to hell. And the Holy Spirit crying and weeping. Saying, I beg of you. I beg of you. Pick it up. He's not calling you to be Willie Russell. He's not calling you to be Tom Bates. He's not calling you to be Todd Hoskins. He's calling you to be you. Who God created you to be. I don't preach like my father. But I'm thankful for his anointing. I don't preach like my great grandfather. But I thank God for his anointing. I don't teach like my mother. But I thank God. For anointing. But I know what it's like. Ooh, hey, that sacrifice. I don't want that. But I read. But I worship. But I pray. But I refuse to answer the call. What's crazy? There are many people in this house, Brother Austin. They're saying, God, I know I'm called, but I just need a sign. I want you to know this this morning. Everybody's looking for God to come and kick them off their high horse just like he did Saul. I want you to know, God didn't send his spirit to knock you off a horse this morning. He sent a six foot three, 200 and some pounds preacher to say, how long will you kick? How long will you resist? Your children are dying and going to hell. Someone's grandchildren are dying going to hell. I, I preached this a few Wednesdays ago. Do you realize that, that there were three tribes that did not settle in the land of promise because God had given them the land on the other side of the river? There were the Gadites, there were the Reubenites, and half the tribe of Manasseh. But their promise was is that they would go and they would help. They would help capture the promised land with their brothers. It wasn't their land, but it was still their promise. It was not their child, but it was still their promise. How long? How long will you kick against the call? They'll come to the music. I want you to understand this. I, I know this ain't some big message. 
I know you, in a, you, you might not be getting anything from it. That's fine. But there are people in this house. And see, this is the crazy thing. Is you know and you have confessed. God's called me. I know God's calling me to something. You say, well, I don't know what it is. God's calling. Moses didn't really understand what God was calling him to do. But he said, you know what, I'll go. Gideon had no idea what God was going to use him to do. He just said, I'll go. All you have to be convinced of is the God that you serve and the call that He's placed on your life. So they resist, they resist, they resist. But then all of a sudden, Elijah one day wakes up. He says, God, hold on to it. Oh, you feel that? Her family didn't grow up in church. But Marie can out-worship about anybody. She don't have to have a microphone, but she loves to worship. And then all of a sudden what she said is, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'll pick it up. Oh, Garrett over here. He's a man of God. He's had to fight battles. He said, God, I'll read your word. I'll play the drums. I'll do whatever you're calling me to do. What happens when he begins to take hold? How long will you kick? How long will you kick? I want you to know this. We, we said this a few weeks ago in the prayer and worship service. God just revealed this to me in that service a few moments before that service started. Do you realize in 2 Kings chapter 4, when the Shunammite woman come, and she said, or the, or the wife of the prophet come, and she said, listen, my husband's dead. We're in debt. The debtor is coming to collect my sons for bond servants, for slaves. I need you to do something. And he said, what do you have? She says, I have, but just a little bit of oil. I have some oil here. And he said, I want you to go to all your neighbors, collect as many vessels as you can, and I want you to go into your house, I want you to pour into them, then I want you to sell the oil, get, get yourself out of debt, uh, and, and let your sons be free. And we, we've heard that story preached so many ways, but what, what happens, she goes into that room and she does exactly what she was told to do. But I want you to notice, the Bible never says that she ran out of oil, she ran out of vessels. I want you to know that God is not running out of anointing and mantles. Uh, he's running out of people that will say yes. He is not short on power. He is not lacking the authority. Uh, but he's just looking for someone to say, I'll stop kicking uh, and I'll say yes. Saul has this encounter. He's blinded. He cannot see. Because I will tell you this from experience. Sometimes for you to realize what God is calling you to, you've got to stop seeing religion around you. He couldn't see. God said, I want you to go into Damascus, go into the city, and I want you to stay, I want you to wait there. I'll tell you what to do. He's praying, he's fasting. Across town, there's a man by the name of Ananias. God speaks to him, says, I want you to go to Saul. He says, Saul, Saul's a bad dude. But you know what Ananias did? I know they're the worst person in town. You know what? I don't even like them. Listen to me, young people. They're so annoying at school. But you don't know they're seeking attention because they're abused at home. And God's saying, I'm drawing you to that person. Not because you think they're annoying, but I'm drawing you to them. 
Because you need to pray for them. What if Ananias would have said, no, not me, not me. Saul would have remained blind. We would never have Paul. But someone said, you know what? God, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to go down the, the street called Straight. I'm going to go to Judas's house where Paul's staying. And he walks in there and he begins to pray. And scales fall from his eyes. Why is that significant? Because God is wanting you to see what he sees. Religion will blind you. But relationship and anointing will cause you to see something in yourself that you never saw. How long will you kick? There's plenty of anointing. There's plenty of opportunity. But God's saying, I need vessels. I need vessels. She did not run out of oil. She ran out of vessels. Oh God, I know I'm called. But the life of an intercessor, I, I don't have the intention span to lock myself in a room and pray. We're so good at making assumptions of what the call will look like. If you would just get in the anointing and get into the river of the Holy Spirit and let Him flow in you, it'll look nothing what you thought it would look like. I had people tell me I would never be a preacher. And you know what, Brother Chris? I believed them. So I rejected this. Until one day in a room in my mammal's house, I said, okay, I don't know how this is going to look. Because I ain't Merle Abrams. I can't hack and snot and spit. And that's how my daddy preaches. Thank God for it. I said, I'm not a teacher like my mom. Just break down every little thing. And God spoke to me. He said, I'm not calling you to be them. I'm just calling you to pick up the mantle. You want to know why Elisha got Elijah's mantle? Elijah had other servants. But why did Elisha get the mantle? Because he said, I'll go where you go. I'll do what you do. Whatever. See, we, 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 we think, oh, Pastor Ronnie's anointed. He's a mighty man of God. And he is. But you're going to have to pray like that man prays. You're going to have to spend time in the Word like that man spends time in the Word. You're going to have to be the servant that God's called him to be if you want the anointing that's on his life. How long will you kick against the call? If you would stand with me across this house, I've taken too much time. I ain't preached you happy this morning. You say, worship was so good, and then you preach this. How dare you? No, worship was good because I needed to preach this. Because the greatest thing you can ever do in your life Say, God, put it on me. Whatever you have for me. You know, me and, me and Brother Austin, I, we went to trade school together, we went to high school together, we went to middle school together. We weren't always friends. God brought us together. And in high school, we went to trade school, and he was in the welding program. I was in the electrical program. And I remember my, my teacher, we had to watch this stuff on safety, and they, they, it's unedited. You have to see what electrical burns look like. Yeah, you, they show you surveillance footage of when people try to load up a switch gear and throw it, and they just disintegrate. I mean, just gone. But they teach you stuff about safety, and they said, listen, if you're ever with a, a partner and, and you see that he is latched on and the voltage is just and the amperage is pulling him in and he can't let go you know what they tell him to do they say drop kick him don't push him they say you can do two things get a two by four because wood is not a conductor and knock their block off 
or get a running start, get both feet up off the ground, and kick them with your boots. And he told a story. You say, oh, that sounds so violent. He told a story. He's working with a partner, and he looked over, and he was just, and he's like, oh, God, i, I got to do this. I never thought I'd have to do this. And Mr. Sinner said, he, I ran, and I jumped. Bam! Guy's laying there. Oh, my gosh. Oh. You say, that sounds so violent, but it saved his life. You say, what does that have to do with anything? If God's got to knock you off your horse. For you to realize that you've been resisting the call. He'll do it. He'll send a preacher to do it. He'll send a parent to do it. Someone trusted in the faith. He'll send them to do it. And so you know what? I know you're called. It's about time you walk in it. You know what I spend years telling these young people is not to get good grades. I want them to get good grades. Is not to be not good at sports. I don't tell them that. I don't, in, I don't tell them any of that. But what I say is there's a call. There's a call. I remember Brother Jaden said to me one time, he said, man, can you teach on something but the call? He said, oh, you teach on it's the call. He said, it always goes back to the call. And he was saying that, you know, we, we, we have the relationship. He could, he could talk to me. Like, he said, I said, I know, man, but that's what it's about. It's not about the football. It's not about the basketball. It's not about all oh, that, that GPA and you go to college and you get a, a diploma and you're doing great things in business. That's great. But if you're doing nothing for the kingdom, it is pointless. You're just religious. If you're just a churchgoer, it's pointless. You're religious. So how long will you kick? Logan, come up here. This is what pastor usually does. I've been around Ronnie too long. But his, his great-grandfather is Pastor Will Russell, Willie Russell. And you know there's preachers in that family. There's, there's many people in this house that aren't here today. They're with him. Understand that they served this house and served the Lord faithfully. But here's what I want you to know is so often we look at, oh yeah, Pastor Ronnie's anointed. He's, he's been taken up to lead this church. Yes, Pastor Phil's anointed. Pastor Donnie's anointed. There's many sisters and brothers in that family that are anointed people of God. But it's for them too. It's for his children, his grandchildren. It's for his great-grandchildren. Emma, Emma Russell, come up here. This woman's called to missions. Turn around. It's for you too. Just pray, church. Just pray. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The Holy Spirit speaking right now. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Matt, come here. Matt Baker, come here. He's got family that's preachers. I don't know what he's called to do. But this is a young man that I've got the privilege to know, and he loves the Lord. He loves young people. He was right there. Him and Ivy right there with our young people at youth conference. You can ask him, praying with them. But there's anointing for him too. And you see what the enemy does is he tries to tell you, no, that's not it. Emma, that's not it. Logan, that's not it. Matt, that's not it. Yes! How long will you resist? The anointing's for you, your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your aunts, your uncles. It's for your family. It's for your church. It's for your community. 
So how long will you kick? There's anointing for you, Matt. There's anointing for you, Emma. There's anointing for you, Logan. How long will you kick against the goal? Hey everyone, uh, Cameron here from PTC Ministries. I'm so glad that you could join us today uh, for the message here. Uh, I hope the message touched you uh, in a personal way and that you can take that and mold that and move it and let it move you in your life. And as you can continue your walk with Christ, continue your walk with us as well. Follow us, uh, click in the link below in the description there. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. And don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Uh, I feel like a YouTuber here, but don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to uh, stay connected with us. Um, and thank you for joining us.